one of the most common things is that a character might be sculpted out using a program like a ZBrush where you can be more free. The topology doesn't really matter. You can even mash pieces together. You could take a nose and just move it around and sculpt it like clay, create different lumps for things like the lips, the eyes, um, and you can find features and find the character that way. Really common in character development because you're trying to find that look and you want the face to be really flexible. Like what if the eyes are bigger, you know, things, and it's less committal to the final topology. Um, but that kind of process gets you so far and then you need clean edge flow to be able to take it through production. When you're dealing with things like characters, you want the resolution to be minimal but only high in the places where lots of deformation will happen. The lower the resolution, the smoother the final look will be. Characters in general get a lot more rounds of divisions and things added. So it's more likely that they would get smoothed out, you know, two or three times or even more. Um, but you still need the resolution so that you can animate and move facial features. And then you want the curves to complement the shape contour of the head. We can't take a sphere from, you know, like a Maya, that's a grid-like mesh, and then just map it to a face and try to sculpt out the face. The edge flow of a grid flying through the face is going to work against the design very much so. And then it goes against that principle of having the least amount of resolution that we can get away with. So. When we deal with something like patch modeling, we're going to model it from, you know, thin air. We're just modeling based on the turns. You can use that same kind of approach, though, even if you had a base topology. So if you had something like a ZBrush sculpt and you wanted to build over it, um, there's going to be a tool that I'm going to show you during this character that's something you might use. But basically, you'd end up retopologizing either over it or adjusting the, the topology of the previous one. So so this process is used with sometimes in tandem with other things. When you're just modeling, it's not just making something look good like this. It has to look good in all the ways it's gonna move. Is the joint set up correctly? Is it set up anatomically so that it'll move nice? Same with the face. Is it gonna deform to smile and move? You know, does it have that ability? So thinking about those things and also understanding these proportions, you guys can harness it. So if you're doing character design, you know what makes somebody look older or younger, more attractive, less attractive, and then you can kind of, you know, use that um, to your benefit. But anyway, uh, what I want to talk about is the overall shape of the head. So the head is not just a circle, although definitely stylized characters can be. But if you're breaking down these shapes, you can think more of an egg so the head actually tapers as it gets to the front. So the widest part of the head is actually here behind the ears. So we're not the widest where our ears connect. It continues to fan back. So if we see the silhouette of her head is still wider, it doesn't mean we need to pull out her jaw to be the farthest. It's actually our, our brains back here that have the most volume. And then if we think about the shapes, we can break it down into three, that the front of the face also isn't just a sphere. If anything, it's more of a cylinder. It's more of flat with a slight bend. If you look at someone's face, it feels a little more flat than that it's a total ball and their eyes are on the side of their head. So think of these shapes when you're building it out and try to remember these landmarks. All right, so patch modeling. What you wanna do first, is we're gonna just create a plane. So in here, I'm gonna just drop it in from here. By default, it's gonna be this 10 by 10 little, little swatch here. I only need this to be two wide and one high because I just want one edge that's gonna cut in the center and this is so that I have symmetry running in my X. So I've got this little piece And I'm gonna rotate this to line it up with the head. I can make it a bit smaller. Oops, scale the whole thing. 
So we've got this piece here. You could start this anywhere, but I usually end up starting somewhere in the middle of the head and then I'm gonna go out in both directions. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna build on this. Let me put my symmetry on so that I don't accidentally not select something. And then when I hold shift, it's gonna activate my, my shortcut to extrude. And I'm just gonna keep pulling and creating new segments. So this is giving me basically a dotted line and a series of planes that are gonna run through the contour of my face. You don't wanna go crazy close and you wanna to try to come up with a pace that you're kind of maintaining. It's going to help you when you get to building out this puzzle later. So we don't have to have the exact same amounts. You don't need to land. Like I'm not verbalizing, okay, go to the chin, go two around the chin, anything like that. But what you don't want to do is just do crazy leaps and you don't want to do itty bitty little steps. Just pick something that kind of gives you the big movements as you go through. All right, so we've got these silhouettes. We're gonna fill in some of these holes next. So I'm actually just gonna bounce to this view and here I'll turn off my image plane here. So we need to fill these. A Couple ways we can do it. We could do our extruding and extrude each one out. We could use um, the append tool where we kind of draw things out. Um, the way I like to do it is I just use a fill hole and then I'm going to draw out my topology inside and then we're going to pump this back up with some volume. So the rules for this is that we need to come up with a point of where's the corner. And once we determine the corner, everything on this side will run front to back. So all the edges here will run all the way through. Everything on this side will run over the head this way. And then there's going to be a point where we say everything below a certain point is going to run through this way. So we're going to figure out that rule, and then it's also going to apply in the back. So if I'm saying, and if I don't have an edge that works for that, I can add that. Um, but it, let's just say to start off with, well, here, I'm going to say this is, I added an edge. I'll say this is the point that's my corner. So what that means is this is a front to back edge. So I'm going to go front to back and front to back. And everything on this side goes over. So I'm going to have that go over and this go over. And now I need to determine how far up is the middle. And I think I at least want this span to go through. And I can use this. So pretty ugly, but I'm getting the puzzle to work. Our jaw doesn't just go to like nothing under here. We still have volume. We've got a whole skeleton under, which actually here, let me pull a skeleton. Maybe that'll illustrate better. Think of the jaw bones happening. So we've got more volume up on our cheekbones. So those are gonna be farther out. We don't need our cheeks to be the farthest, but we've got a whole set of teeth, a teeth and we've got a jaw bone. So if we have this go down to nothing, we're not really saving any room for the mouth. In general, attractive faces have full mouths, full teeth. Um, this seems like an attractive girl, so we don't wanna give her tiny teeth. So whenever we're modeling, even though we're modeling these exterior shells, we're really imagining that there's things underneath that are informing the shapes that we're going around. So it's coming in perpendicular to the eye. So here, this angle is coming in at the eye. So what we don't want it to do, uh, let me pick a different color here, is we don't want it to be really shallow like this, and we don't want it to be jutting back really extreme. So if this is the eyelid, we don't want any angle except basically the, well, it's not so much that it has to be 90 degrees, that changes, but it needs to be always coming in angled at the eye. And that's because we're imagining that it's going to be blinking and we don't want where it meets. If it's here at the middle of the eye, the two eyelids shouldn't be meeting like that and they shouldn't be crashing through. They should just be meeting. I don't know. I picked pink. 
but they should just be meeting right there in the center. So we're gonna keep that in mind when we add, um, add that part to our eye.